Hello and welcome to Jensen Ranch's Kindergarten Orientation. My name is Lisa McLean and I am Jensen Ranch's Principal. Over the next several minutes, we'll walk you through what it's like to be a kindergarten here, here at Jensen Ranch, what the expectations are, and what you can do to help prepare your child over the summer. Don't worry, we're going to take great care of them, and no matter where they start at at the beginning of the school year, we're going to help them be successful. Please take note of these important dates. The extended day kindergarten schedule is our regular weekly schedule. Please take note of our Kindergarten Gentle Beginnings, which takes place during the first two weeks of the school year. Our students will be getting out at noon each day to allow for our kindergarten team to assess each student in the afternoons. We will make final kindergarten placements by August 19th, but there may be a need to make some adjustments to our classroom placements before then. Hi, my name is Katie Ju, and I currently teach the kindergarten class in room one. We plan to speak with you about three different things, our kindergarten program, how to prepare your child for kindergarten and kindergarten assessments. First of all, before I say anything else, I want you to know that your child does not have to know how to read before beginning kindergarten. That is our job as your kindergarten teachers to teach your children. We will teach them how to read and write and how to understand mathematics. Our kindergarten program is rigorous. We teach thematically. This means that the topic we are learning about becomes our focus in almost every subject. For example, in the fall, we begin reviewing the colors. We come dressed in the colors. We do math with the colors by sorting, graphing, and counting. We write about the colors. We read about the colors, and we sing about the colors. Research has proven, and we've learned, that when your child is immersed in what they're learning, that's when they learn it and retain it best. This year, our kindergarten programs were on an extended day schedule. This means that after two weeks of getting to know the kiddos, we moved to an extended day schedule. The children began school at 8, 10 a.m. and have been dismissed at 1.31 p.m., Monday through Thursday. On Fridays, they came from 8, 10 to 12. Now, this Monday through Thursday schedule looked slightly different in each classroom, but a typical daily schedule was 8, 10 to 10 with whole group instruction, such as morning routines, writing, and math, 10 to 10.20 was snack and recess, 10.20 to 11.40 was more whole group instruction, including working with letters, completing activities that are literacy-based, and small group instruction. 11.40 to 12.20 was lunch and recess, and then from 12.20 to 1.30, there was more whole group instruction, including science, social, social studies, character education, and free exploration. Upon dismissal, each child's grown-up has come to the school waiting outside the black gate, and the child's teacher has waited until we've seen the specific grown-up to release them to. We will never allow a child to roam around freely. If a child attends Adventure Time or another after-school program, they too have come to the black gate to pick up the child. Most of the after-school programs are already familiar with these procedures. If, after about 15 minutes, someone has not arrived to pick up a child, the child gets walked over to the office to make a phone call to be picked up. Due to our rigorous program, the kindergarten classrooms will accept parent volunteers. This information will be provided next year by your child's teacher at Back to School Night. Hi, Mrs. Hawkins here, current kindergarten teacher in room two. I'm going to talk to you about kindergarten readiness, things that you can do at home to prepare your child for kindergarten, and kindergarten assessments. So there are numerous things that you can do to get your child ready for kindergarten. Number one, make sure that your child can say their first and their last name. So if I say, hi, who are you? They should be able to tell me their first name as well as their last name. Also make sure your child can recognize their name in print, first name only. Last names take a little bit more time to recognize. Um, number two, 
They should know how to ask for help or to tell an adult when something is wrong. That's really important when there are one or two adults with 25 to 50 children, sometimes even more. Number three, read books every day. Read, 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 read. You read to them, they read on their own, they read to you. Even if your child is just pretending to read and they've got that book memorized, it's okay. Read, 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 read. Number four, work on small motor skills such as coloring, holding a pencil, cutting with scissors, removing caps from glue sticks. That takes a ton of time in the classroom, so make sure your kid can just pull that glue stick cap on, roll it up, roll it down, put that cap back on all by themselves. Number five, practice following simple two-step directions. That's important in class. Number six, practice social skills such as taking turns, sharing, using kind words, using positive words. A really great way of practicing that is to play board games. Not by the rules you might have made up that help your kid win, but by the real actual rules as they're written in the book or in the box. And don't always let your child win. What happens when they lose? See what happens when they lose. Because in the classroom and they're playing games with other students, they aren't always going to win. So it's a great time to talk about good sportsmanship, to talk about feelings, how it feels to win, how it feels to lose. So don't always let them win. Play fair. Number seven, practice taking on simple responsibilities, such as cleaning up after themselves, by themselves, getting dressed by themselves, um, using the bathroom by themselves, doing zippers um, on their jackets, on their pants, buttons, blowing their noses, getting a tissue, throwing the tissue away when it's done instead of just handing it to the adult closest to them. So practice some of those daily skills that they might need to know in class and might need to do independently. Number eight, count to 10. Count to 10, that's it. Practice counting to 10. Count to 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Put some objects out and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. If your child can already count to 10, awesome. Count higher, count to 20, count to 30. Number nine, sing the alphabet. That ABC song, practice singing that ABC song. If your child has that memorized, work on learning some other nursery rhymes and just having a stash of nursery rhymes memorized. Number 10, build their self-esteem. Kindergarten is hard. It's hard, hard, hard. So praise your child often for their hard work. Kindergarten isn't the same as it was when you and I were kids. It's no longer nap and snack time and learning how the letters go. It's work, it's work, work, work. We joke as teachers and say that kindergarten is the new first grade. So they're actually expected to do a lot in kindergarten and they will learn a lot in kindergarten. Don't be surprised if they come home and fall asleep on the way home or need a nap or go to sleep earlier than usual because kindergarten and all that learning is exhausting. And number 11, talk to them. Talk to your child. Ask open-ended questions where they need to respond and give you information. What was the best part of your day? Why? What was the worst part of your day? Why? What did you learn today? Tell me about it. What did you want to learn today but didn't? How come? So lots of open-ended questions. Now, a lot of adults and parents and caregivers want to know about assessments in kindergarten. We do assess our kindergartners four times throughout the year we do kindergarten assessments. The first assessment typically takes place in September or October. It's called our initial assessment. And then leading up to each report card, we have other assessments. So the second assessment takes place in about um, an September, end of September, beginning of October. The third one takes place in January and most of February. And then the fourth is right before report cards go home in May. We assess on a variety of different things that they've been learning in class and hopefully practicing at home. These assessments help drive our instruction. They help us differentiate this instruction to meet your child's needs. They help us determine areas that your child might need some extra support or where they need to be challenged. These assessments are given one-on-one, -on -one, um, individually with the child. Sometimes they are given whole group where the child is expected to have a pencil and paper and write things down and other times the assessments are informal observations where the teacher might be walking around the classroom marking off skills that we see. At Back to School Night, we will be able to give you tons more information on assessing students and those initial assessments and assessments throughout the school year, and we'll be able to answer all those questions for you. I look forward to meeting you. Bye!
at Jensen Ranch, your children are going to be learning about positive behaviors and expectations here at school to help them be successful. We call it PBIS. Our students know it as the PAW Pledge. So let's practice together and you can practice with your students as well. As a Jensen Jaguar, I pledge to P, give my personal best. A, act responsibly. W, we show respect. S, put safety first. Together, we make Jensen Ranch positive. Okay, now try it with your child. Let's practice. P, do your personal best. A, act responsibly. W, we show respect. S, put safety first. Together, we make Jensen Ranch positive. Your child will learn the PAW Pledge and will ultimately be held accountable for these expected behaviors on campus. We want to make sure everyone contributes to our school in a positive way as a Jensen Jaguar. As part of our registration process, you will have access to our 2022-2023 Jensen Ranch Handbook. Please make sure you take time to read through there. There's lots of important information for you, especially as a new family. Whether you're a new or returning family to Jensen, if you have a kindergartner, remember kindergartners must be walked to their classroom by an adult each morning and are not allowed to be dropped off in the drop-off zone or walk to school by themselves. There is no on-site parking, only off-campus parking is available. Do not park in the drop-off loop and do not park in the staff parking lot. The campus is very busy in the morning, so plan enough time to walk to school or park off campus. The gates open at 8 a.m. and if you arrive after 8.10, please stop by the office to pick up a late slip. Pickup after school takes place outside the school gates. A reminder, you should not be parking in the pickup loop. Please wait outside the gates and your child's teacher will meet you there to dismiss. If your child attends Adventure Time or an off-site child care program, again, pickup will take place outside the gate. And if your child is participating in Play CV, they will be met by the classroom by a Play CV staff member. If you are running late, please call the school office. And if you have somebody different picking up your child than was expected, please make sure your child's teacher is notified or again, call the office. Our Jensen Ranch School office is open from 7.45 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please make sure you check in here if you're coming onto campus. Do you need to pick up your child early? Stop by the office and we will send for your child Need to drop something off for your child? Drop it off at the office and we will deliver it. If you're scheduled to volunteer, again, check in at the office. At Jensen, we love our visitors and volunteers. Your first stop though is always going to be at the office. You wanna make sure that you're checking in and that you have permission to be on site and that you have been cleared, especially if you are volunteering. As a Jensen Ranch family, please make sure you are demonstrating your positive behavior when you come to school as well. Please remember not to park in our loading zone during the drop-off and pickup times because it can create a lot of problems for everybody else who is trying to get through the campus. Communicating and partnering with our Jensen Ranch families is important to us. Please take a look at this information to see the wide variety of ways you can stay in touch with what's happening at school and stay involved.
Thank you for joining us for Jensen Ranch's kindergarten orientation. We hope this time has been useful to you and we look forward to meeting you and your child in August.